as well as downloading the Automic Automation Intelligence install media, a Java 1.8 JDK is also required. The system being used in this demonstration is utilizing the Adopt Open JDK, as a screenshot illustrates. If the AI database type is Oracle, it's also a good idea to ensure that the JDBC driver is available on the server. This will save some time later. Once the zip file has been unpacked, execute the installer. It's recommended to run this as the administrator. The AAI install process will begin. The first step is to review and accept the license agreement. Next, choose where the AAI application should be installed and then where the program shortcuts should be located. By default, AAI will be configured as a Windows service that starts on system boot. If you'd like to prevent this, then you can do so here. The AAI server ID and description are added here. Now specify the AAI DBMS type and the database location details. In this demonstration, we are using Microsoft SQL Server. With that complete, the database details are now required. The database entries made here will be written to the SQL file that we will need to execute later on. The number of executions per day and the retention periods specified here will be used by the installer to determine the initial AAI database size. Next, specify the periodic task schedules. In this demonstration, we will use the default values. They can always be changed post-installation. To activate the product, complete this panel with the details relevant to your organisation. The company domain will ordinarily match everything after the at sign in your corporate email address. The site ID is the Broadcom site ID associated to your account. If you do not know these, then speak to your Broadcom account representative who would be pleased to help. The final step is to provide SNMP and or SMTP server details for alert delivery. Again, these configuration items can be easily added later via the configuration tool. With the interview stage completed, the installation can now be performed. Upon completion of the install, please take note of the important message. This provides the name and location of the SQL scripts that are now required to create the Atomic Automation Intelligence database. If you have chosen Oracle as your AAI database platform, then the JDBC driver that you have downloaded can now be copied or moved to the required location. Place the JDBC driver within the AAI install slash jboss slash standalone slash deployments directory. The readme file contains more information related to your AAI install, the SQL file location and their purpose, how to start the server process and where to go should you need help. In this demonstration, I am using Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio. I have already connected to the AI database as an administrator, in this case, the SA user. First, open the Create Devices SQL file. This is the file that will create the database.
There are some changes that need to be made before the file is executed. The at at user at at string should be changed to the name of the database application user you wish to create. The at at password at at string should be changed to the password you wish to set for that user. Once those changes have been applied, the file can be executed. Now, grant the privileges to the user that has just been created. In this demonstration, I am granting the user the DB owner role. Next, connect to the database as the new account, locate and then execute the create JAWS DB SQL file. This will create the AAI database tables. Before starting the AAI server, it's good practice to verify the database connection. To do this, navigate to the installation directory, open the config directory, and execute the run.bat script. After selecting the AAI installation directory, the configuration tool will open. As well as testing the database connectivity, this is also where logging levels, periodic task intervals and other settings such as SMTP, SNMP and Java heap sizes can be administered. Having installed the AAI server as a Windows service, simply open the Windows Services panel and start the service. Once the service has started, review the server.log and JAWS.log files to ensure that there are no errors. The server log file should indicate a successful JBoss startup. The JAWS log file should indicate a successful database connection and initialization. The JAMA process should also have run. The URL for the user interface can be found on the README page. 
the Classic Launcher will download a JNLP file to your computer that can be executed to start the Java Thick client. Upon launching the web UI, credentials will need to be entered. Here, use the default admin credentials. Once logged in, click on the Unify link to launch the Java Thick client. This will require Java Web Start on your local computer. The AAI user interface is now open. The Help menu will display the version of the product that has now been installed. Thank you for watching.